Not even a hurricane is going to stop me from upgrading an antiquated irrigation system like this one over my shoulder with ball valves and that Intermatic timer. We're going to be installing a smart controller and inline control valves to control this irrigation system. So let's get started. Due to the limited space here, we won't be installing these valves underground like we typically do. We're going to be installing them above ground. I know that might make a few of you a little upset, but they're going to work just the same above ground or below ground. And then this area will be gated off so that you can't see the valves. How am I going to fit the valves in here like that? Well, I'm going to take this pump, flip it around and place it over here. That way I can open up room for all of the valves right here. If none of that makes sense to you, just wait. I'll show you what that looks like in just a second. Here it is the day after the storm and we're back to do the plumbing part of this job. I'm gonna get started by cutting all of those pipes out of my way so I can start building the above ground manifold. Yep, above ground manifold that I'll be installing here. As you can see, there's not a lot of space to work with and we're not going to start cutting into this walkway to install the valves. Those pipes will run right out of there into this walkway. There's not enough room to install the valves underground. We're going to install them above ground. Without further ado, let me start cutting these pipes out, get this pump connected to these pipes because I've actually not seen this system run since day one. So it'd be like starting up Frankenstein. You didn't really think I was going to install those valves above ground, did you? Oh yeah, I dug it out. We're doing a meter pit. They're going underground for sure. I just gotta do a little bit of reorganizing of the pipes here to make everything fit. And that's what I'm going to do next. Today, we're installing six new valves. They're all made by Eritrol. Five of them are inch and a half, and one of them is a one inch valve. For the controller and relay, we're using Hunter's HPC controller and their PSR22 relay to start the horse and a half pump that we're also installing. With these new components, we're gonna be able to fire up this irrigation system and go see what Frankenstein has to say to us because the first time I was out here, we didn't see anything work. All I know for sure is at least two of these zones are gonna do stuff in the pond. You'll see in a minute what I'm talking about there. The other four zones are gonna irrigate the lawn and shrubs throughout the property. All right, and with that, we can turn the hat back around. This job is done. We did end up upgrading this system from an old Flowtech horse and a half pump with an intermatic timer and six ball valves. That was a super inefficient system and none of it worked because most of those ball valves were not functioning and not turning. So I wasn't even able to turn this system on to take a look at the rest of the property to see what else is going on. In order to do that, we had to do what you saw me do here today, which is to upgrade this system, at least a digital system with the valves we installed and the brand new pump will now give us the ability to turn each one of those pipes on or the valves on to see where everything goes. I turned on the first one just to make sure our system is running and it's watering this area around the little pool right here. I haven't turned any other zones on yet. I'm still going to go through the system. I've got to put the Wi-Fi information into that controller so I can stop touching it and start using my phone right here to control the system. Once I go through the whole system, I'm going to write the customer a proposal to make whatever repairs we see to the system. I haven't got to see this pawn thing work yet. so. In a minute, the next thing you'll see is this pond thing squirting water out. In addition to these jets, there's also, if they cut away some of these ferns and stuff, there is a fountain over there that is pouring water over, a, a cascading water over a couple of uh, features over there. But zone three is not an irrigation zone. So what we may end up doing is programming zone three to run for, I don't know, four hours during the middle of the day so that this water feature can happen. And we'll do that on a separate program on our HydroWise controller. That way they can have their water feature out. At, in fact, they're out right now. When they get home, they're gonna see this running because I'm gonna leave it running. They've never seen this all running before. They just bought this property about a year ago. Zone four is this pipe right here that's leading to this little waterfall. They need to clean all of this up and this waterfall will reveal itself and then it'll look real nice going into this pond here. So zone three, zone four, zone two was these two rotors right here and zone one was around the pool there. We still got two more zones. I'm kind of hoping some irrigation comes on on that side of the property over there where there's still some turf. There's really not a whole lot of plant material back there that needs the water. It's all Florida natural plants back there. The turf over there definitely needs the water. So let's see if zone number five does that. Okay, good there was a zone over here. The only problem is 
There's also supposed to be one over here. So let's hope and pray. Nope, that's on a different zone. All right, so maybe that was on zone one. I don't know. Just got to make sure all of these are rotating and it seems like these three are. So we'll go look at the three on the other side and we'll go from there.